Today's talk is about the concept of formulas and um, the mole. Now, the mole is a concept we're introducing really early in the course. It's going to become really important in Unit 3, but right now I want to introduce the concept so we can start thinking about it and start practicing with it but so that by the time we get to Unit 3, we're really ready. Now, when we're talking about formulas, there are a lot of ways in which you can talk about formulas in chemistry. Let's look at one example. So we're going to look at glucose. Now, glucose has what we call a molecular formula. A molecular formula tells you how many elements or how many of each type of element are present in the molecule. Okay? Now you'll note there are three elements present, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Each of them has a subscript. That subscript, the number, tells you how many of each of those are present. Now if there's a one involved, you don't write the one. It's assumed there's a one if there's a letter but no number. A little grammar rule that goes into place. Note, the problem with the molecular formula is it doesn't tell you any way in which these are connected to each other. It just tells you what atoms are present and how many of them there are. You can simplify that formula too. If we look at that past formula, C6H12O6, we can divide all those numbers by 6, where we get CH2O. This is what's referred to as an empirical formula. It's the lowest ratio of atoms to each other. Now, in ionic compounds, which we're going to talk about in Unit 2, these are important. Molecular compounds, which we're also going to call in Unit 2, these aren't terribly important. They don't depict the reality of a molecule. A molecule is why we use a molecular formula. It tells you exactly how many atoms of each element are in a compound. This just tells you the ratios between the elements in a compound. Last, we have what's called a structural formula. A structural formula is an attempt to show how the atoms are interconnected to each other. This is that same formula, C6H12O6, depicted in what we call a bond line structure. So in this case, all of the angles that don't have a designation on them are carbons. Then you can see the oxygens attached to them, and you can see hydrogens attached to them. Now, there's extra hydrogens on here because, as you can see, this carbon has one, two, three bonds. Carbons typically have four bonds, so there's an assumed fourth hydrogen on there. So, as you can tell, there's a lot of kind of like nitty-gritty and grammar rules to how structural formulas look. Takeaway is they are a way of showing how the atoms are interconnected. And this is important because a molecular formula like C6H12O6 could refer to a lot of different molecules. Glucose and fructose have the same molecular formula, but they differ in their structural formulas. We call this isomers, right? Having the same formula, but different structures, right? So on the left here, we have glucose, and on the right here, we have fructose, right? Same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, same number of oxygens. Don't believe me, go count them, right? Okay, the mole. The mole is an important concept. The mole is a unit of quantity in chemistry. So let's look at why the mole is important. This is a representation of hydrogen sulfide, H2S. The white areas designate hydrogen atoms. The yellow kind of spherical object designates a sulfur atom. So if we look at this purely based on mass, not looking at anything other than mass, we find out that 94.1% of this molecule is sulfur, and only 5.9% of it is hydrogen. However, if we look at it in terms of atoms, right, if we look at it in terms of atoms, there are two hydrogens for every one sulfur. Now you can begin to see the problem that we have to deal with in chemistry. Not all elements weigh the same. In fact, every element has its own unique mass. Therefore, we cannot look at chemicals solely based on mass because it won't give us the actual relationship of the elements to each other. So we need a way to normalize for the mass. And the way we do that is a concept called the mole. All right. This mole is a unit of quantity that's normalized so that all atoms are equal to each other. Okay. So a mole is defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, molecules, or formula units. 
that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, it's a famous number in chemistry. It's referred to as Avogadro's number. All right. Why is it called that number? Avogadro was a dude who first kind of hit on this relationship between mass and quantity. And so when they developed the concept, they named it in his honor. To be honest, yeah, you should learn what Avogadro's number is, but it's not something you use a ton in chemistry. It's just one of those things that you know a mole consists of this many of that. But other than that, it really doesn't serve a tremendous amount of practical purpose. We can also define a mole is the amount of a substance that contains as many basic units, atoms, molecules, or formula units, as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. Now this is important because if you think back to the talk we had about relative atomic mass, right? We talked about relative atomic mass. We talked about AMUs. How much was an AMU? And we said that an AMU, one AMU was exactly one twelfth the mass of one atom of carbon-12. Well, note both of these are codified to the same element. In fact, the same isotope of the same element, carbon-12. And they're using the exact same scale. Whereas an AMU is 1 12th of one atom of carbon-12, a mole is exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. Right? So that means that the number you generated in the relative atomic mass exercise, that's the number of AMUs per an atom of that material. But if you convert that number to grams, that's the number of grams for one mole of that material. So that number, that relative atomic mass at the bottom of the entry in the periodic table, that is both the mass in AMUs for an atom of it and the mass in grams for a mole of that element. Okay. So if we look at one mole of H2S, we have one mole of sulfur and two moles of hydrogen because each of those H2S molecules can be broken apart into two H's and one S. To reiterate, since both the molar mass and the relative atomic mass are linked to that C12, that carbon 12, right? That means that the numbers are interconvertible. One atom, relative atomic mass. One mole of an atom equals molar mass. Relative atomic mass is in AMUs, molar masses and grams. So let's look at this. So let's say we have 256.1 grams of aluminum bromide. How many moles do we have? Well, aluminum bromide is AlBr3. And you're like, how do I know that? You don't at this point. I'm telling you this. In unit two, you're going to figure out how you would know that that's AlBr3. But at this point, I would have to tell you the formula unit I wanted you to work with. So we can determine that one molecule of AlBr3, right, one formula unit, is 266.69 AMUs. Now, how did I get that? Well, I went to my periodic table. I took one quantity from aluminum, and I took one quantity from bromide. I multiplied the bromine times 3, added them together, and I get 266.69 AMUs. That also means that one mole of aluminum bromide is 266.69 grams. So again, going back to this concept, if I'm talking about a single formula unit, it's AMUs. If I'm talking about a mole of that formula unit, it's grams. And I can also then use this in a dimensional analysis. So if I wanna know how many moles of aluminum bromide I have, with 256.1 grams, I would set up a very straightforward dimensional analysis. I want to know the moles of aluminum bromide. I have 256.1 grams. I know for every one gram, there are 266.69 grams, right? For one mole, there's 266.69 grams. Gram cancels gram. This divided by that gives me 0 0.9603. So that's how we would do it. This calculation and the next one I'm going to show you are essential in your understanding of how to do problems in chemistry. We're introducing them now in unit one and we're using fairly straightforward, fairly simple ones because by the time we get to unit three, you have to have this 
particular operation down. It needs to be something that you've got in your head and you no longer think about it, you just do it. All right. So don't forget to practice this. Going from moles to grams, grams to moles. Here I went from grams, my given, to moles. Next problem, let's go moles to grams. So given 1.234 moles of hydrogen sulfide, how many grams do we have? All right, so hydrogen sulfide is H2S. And feel free when I'm going through these, if you want to try to figure them out on your own, you can always pause the video and then start it back up once you think you have the answer. That means that one formula unit of H2S is 34.08 AMUs, and one mole of H2S is 34.08 grams. Right. So again, we'd set up a dimensional analysis. If I want to figure out the grams of H2SO4 and I have 1.2340 moles of H2SO4, I would need moles on bottom now. So the 34.08 grams goes on top, moles go on bottom, moles cancel. This times this gives me 42.05 grams, right? So 1.234 times 34.08 gives me 42.05. Again, I'm bounded to four significant figures because there's four significant figures in my original data. Um, I know I'm reiterating myself here, I'm repeating myself, but I cannot emphasize enough. This slide and the last one, the mathematical operations did it, that we did in those are essential to your success in this class. So don't skip up on practicing this. Okay, so let's add one little wrinkle to it. So here's a problem. Given a 200 cubic centimeter sample of mercury metal, which has a density of 13.53 grams per cubic centimeter. How many moles are there? Okay. So think through the problem. What data do you have? You have 200 cubic centimeters, and then you have 13.53 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, we got cubic centimeters in both of those, which means I can cancel them, which would leave me in what units? That would leave me in grams. I could figure out the molar mass of mercury metal from the periodic table and I convert grams to moles. So let's formula, form, formalize, there we go, formalize this process. So the mercury is 200.59 AMUs, meaning one mole of mercury is 200.59 grams. So 200 cubic centimeters times 13.53 grams per cubic centimeter. That's going to eliminate the cubic centimeters and put me in grams. I'm then going to multiply by one mole over 200.59 grams. The grams are going to cancel. When I go through this entire equation, 200 times 13.53 divided by 200.59, I get 13.5 moles. Why three sig figs? It should be this 200, even though that's an ambiguous unit. Really should have been 200 point or 2.00 times 10 to the second. But let's say that's three sig figs for now. So 13.5 moles.